Welcome to the Real Punnets Podcast, Episode 3. This time, we're going to be talking about remakes. And with that, we're going to be talking about the good, the bad, and the lazy. Let's get started. Once again, this is the Real Punnets Podcast, Episode 3. We are talking about remakes. My name is Brandon, and with me, as always, is Alex. What's happening? What's going on, Alex? How was your week? Uh, another week, and two episodes in one week. Yeah. We're moving forward. On we, are, uh, we are working. Yeah, we're now putting officially work, working. Yeah. Putting in that work. It's, it's, not starting to f- it's not starting to feel like work yet, so that's... Uh... No, no. Definitely not feeling like work, but this is definitely putting in a little bit more extra time because this week we did a little bit more uh background work a little more research spend a little bit of time doing that well since we just talked a few days ago and did the uh episode on the oscars yeah we'll skip all the how what'd you do this week uh basically it was the the episode on the oscars uh, episode on the oscars and watching a couple of new trailers here and there but nothing really of of note um i also saw that wrinkle in time Oof. Not getting a lot of good publicity so far. Well, you know, it happens. But people are seeing it, though, to be able to make comments. So that, to me, already is a better start than most. I've been so busy, all I've been able to do is watch little clips on YouTube. I got into a um, got into a little um, thing last night where I spent like two hours watching just clips of Beyond Scared Straight. Weirdest thing, to watch grown men make small children cry. That sounds like a good hobby. There should be a movie about it. Oh boy, I can see this going somewhere. This is seriously, just think about it, right? Okay. Uh, imagine the horror film. Uh huh. Teenagers on a scared straight thing, right? Okay. They're going through with guards. All of a sudden, the prison power goes out, all the doors are shut, and the inmates riot, take over, take hostages. And little kids are there. And, and children are there. Children. Children. Okay. Like, like, you know, ranging, same way beyond scared straight, ranging from like 10 to 17. Okay. I, I'm seeing where this is going, but I mean, you're also I mean, talking- this is more of a thriller than it is a uh, than it is a horror. But yeah, it could it could be something. At least it's more creative than some of the crap we've seen. In fact, okay. In fact, speaking of a lack of creativity, oh, we're gonna we're, we're gonna go in? we're gonna go jump right into this uh, this episode. Uh, so the first thing I want to do with discussion of remakes is talk about the remakes I like. Well, I think before we even get into the, the remakes we like or we don't like, let's get into the concepts of what we're talking about. We're talking about remakes, remasterings, revisits, uh, revisits, reimaginations, rehashings, all the re's that you could possibly come up with. Where do you stand on remakes, first of all? I know where I stand on remakes. I think it's it's really what are you remaking and how are you doing it? To me, it's lazy. See, sometimes I, I have to disagree with you on the there are, lazy side of it. Because I think that some remakes are needed for the jumps in technology that have been made. I also think that some stories need to be retold in a way that was a little bit more refined than it was the original time. Perfect example, one of the ones I know we're going to jump into, Evil Dead. Ah, see, that is a remake I enjoyed. I enjoyed... Not because it was a, it was a good film. It was did, both I, of them. It, it was it was okay. There was there was magic in the first film. That's a different type of magic. I mean, that's that's something that we can actually. But that's the thing. You took a cult classic that was made great by terrible acting and low budget effects, and put terrible acting and high budget effects in it. And the difference is with the high budget effects, the movie's supposed to be taken seriously. And with the terrible acting, it's hard to. But I do give credit to Sam Raimi for finally being able to make the movie he intended to make in 1981 with the 2013 remake. And that is one of the things I was going to talk about. And you take one from my favorite director, Dawn of the Dead. 1978's was wonderful. But 2004's, I think it's one of the only remakes out there where I and man horror fans are going to lynch me for this. Okay. But... I feel like the 2004 version is better than the 1978 version. Wow. Ben Rames. Great actors in that one. Uh, 
If I can't Up sit there. Up-to-date effects, great actors, well-done storytelling, didn't feel rushed, and the soundtrack, Richard Cheese, made that. Just having that lounge down with the sickness, and I don't like Disturbed, so the fact that they improved a terrible song by making it awesome. I think it was a definite improvement. I wouldn't say that one is over the other. I think both of them, for me, have their place. But, I'll watch one, and then maybe later on, a couple of months later, I'll be in the mood to watch the other. I, I, I enjoy both. I'm not saying that one's bad and one's good. I'm saying that I like the 2004 version a little more. Okay. I, I think they're... The horror was a little bit more fun in the original. Yeah. Uh, no, especially knowing the background of the of the movie, knowing that's family and friends that joined in to help out making the movie just a little bit better. Knowing that that mall really doesn't exist anymore also made it more fun. I think knowing the background of the original makes it more fun for me. Mm-hmm. But when you get into the new one, it was clean. And it really set up to follow on into what could come next. I like that movie from start all the way through the credits. I liked the little hidden feature film thing that they were on that other island. I was like, this is a good transfer. I could see... And they never did it. I know, and that's what kills me about that one. But I, this out of the ones that we have on our list, it's one of the ones I don't think there's ever going to be a beef between us over. Yeah, and there's there's other ones that I liked. I love the 1934 Count of Monte Cristo, but I also really enjoy the 2002 remake. And that's where I get into when you start talking about not liking remakes. There are remakes that have been done that have been done so well. Those are called exception to the rule. Exception to the rule, I'll I'll bend for. But if we're gonna get into that same category of talking about a remake going from one extreme to another extreme. What if the remake was in the same lane? My all-time favorite example, one of my favorite films, Psycho. Now, see, in the 1960 version of Psycho, just an amazing film. The, Correct. I'm not even gonna. There's nothing really more I can sit there and hype about it. One of my all-time favorite Hitchcock pieces. Now, you get into the 1998 version of it. You have the exact same movie. All they did was exchange actors and actresses and we just modernized the timeline but we didn't change anything it was an almost a shot for shot they wouldn't even call it a remake that was them literally taking the old storyboards similar to remastering it except doing it with better equipment that is an exception to the rule okay i'm gonna keep on bringing up exceptions to the rules if you were to remove one key actor in that film that movie would have sucked Sucked hard. Yeah, but they pulled it off. And the actor that I'm speaking of, for those of you that don't like him, it's Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn killed that. Uh, one, one of the times where he dialed it in or he wasn't being silly at, at all, even down to the last scene where he's sitting in the cell, his creepy smile was almost perfect. Uh, I believed it. And I thought it was a good retelling of an actual movie. But... We're starting to slowly run out of my list of, of movies that I know for fact of remakes that you're going to be, hey, that was an exception to the rule. Mm-hmm. I know. There's so few of them. <laughs> All right. Well, then... Let's talk about one that's not. Let's talk about one that's close to home with you. Oh, boy. Which let's one? Let's talk about Godzilla. All right. This is not my genre. This is not my market. I have no dog in this fight. I am not a fan of large monsters, except for Gamera. Okay. I somehow like that giant turtle thing. However, Godzilla, the big nuclear lizard, is not my it's not my bag. And it could be that I never watched a Godzilla film until I saw that stupid Matthew Broderick film. And so therefore it put a really bad taste in my mouth. And I think that's where the concepts of Godzilla's in remakes, and even though amongst big monster fans, we don't even claim that version of Godzilla as, as I, don't, I, I try not to claim a lot of things. Well, they've renamed it Zilla. They've just cut out the Godzilla part. Not it's just on the DVD box. Yeah, not on the DVD box. But amongst big monster fans, that one had to be cut short because it's not even really I Godzilla. Could, I can, as a Universal Movie Monster fan, just try to forget about the Tom Cruise remake of The Mummy. 
We can get into but, that. No, we're we're going to talk about Godzilla right talk. now, but I can try to pretend that never happened, but I can't. True. Now, you don't there's pick a, and choose here. No, you can't pick and choose, but there was a redeeming factor in the Godzilla line. So you had the originals, and I'm going multiple because I'm, you can go I'm on waiting, for... I'm waiting to hear the redeeming line, the quality. The, the redemption. <laughs> the redemption. We, we, once we get into the 2014 Godzilla, now... There was a lot of work that was done. Nope. <laughs> oh, you're already shooting Garbage me down. film. Garbage film, but it's set up like a traditional classic Godzilla film. All the key points of Godzilla, good or bad, thrown out the window, like the way it's supposed to be. And Godzilla did every single thing that Godzilla was supposed to do. I even enjoyed the fact that you didn't get Godzilla right in the start of the movie and you're dealing with mass destruction. You had this slow trickle effect. You got a chance to see about the people on the ground. I know that may not have been your thing or anybody else's thing, but you got the slow trickle of what is this creature. You didn't get a full view until midway through the second act. And to me, as a big monster fan, that's what you're looking for. You know what you did get in that film? What'd you get? The fusion of Homer Simpson and Heisenberg. Okay, we're moving forward from the Heisenberg situation. But that Godzilla prove that it can be done now the reason why that worked is because toho decided which for those people who don't know toho is the company that basically owns this all unlike beforehand with the matthew broderick godzilla where they kind of was like oh hey you guys can go ahead and do it we're not going to sit there and watch you and then we got what we got with even Zilla. puff daddy's ashamed of that film yeah he should be when you go into 2014 godzilla toho was watching approving, making sure things moved well, which is now leading into our new big monster crossover. And we can do the crossover thing. Hey, it's been a long time. People want to see it. You know, I keep hearing about this. Oh, the, the original creators give the rub or the original people, you know, they're watching and they're, you know, I heard the same thing in 2010, the oh. exact same thing in 2010 on with Nightmare on Elm Street. I heard yeah. the exact same, and everybody I knew was praising this guy who was going to play Freddy Krueger because he was Rorschach in a terrible film called The Watchmen. Hey, I like The Watchmen. I don't care what you like. I'm still going to bash it right You're now. Gonna go ahead and bash, man. Go ahead and bash. Get your bash out right now so you don't do it on other films. What I got was a studio taking a giant dump on a Freddy Krueger costume. Mm -hmm. That's the best PG analogy I can give. And you ever seen that South Park episode where they watched Indiana Jones? No, actually, I missed that one. Okay. Matter basically, fact, all of them. Go basically, ahead. you don't like South Park? Not a big Something fan. Something wrong with you. I like I know. South Park. Now, in the episode of South Park where the boys watched Indiana Jones, they were trying, they were scarred because they watched um, Steven Spielberg and George Lucas sexually assault Indiana Jones in front of their eyes. That's what I felt happened to Freddy Krueger. I felt like I watched him being sexually assaulted, and it was scarring. It really was. It was heartbreaking. It was scarring. It was terrible. I feel, I feel betrayed and wronged for it. And I, I, and instead of an apology, they're doubling down. They're doing it again. We're getting another one. At least that's what I hear. I'm not sure if that's fact. God, I hope not. I hope that, I hope that stays in movie making limbo like the other remake I'm dreading. Which, which one is, is that? The Crow. Ugh. I, I don't care if it's Jason Momoa or any other. You could tell me. I want to see how they're going to do it. You I could mean, tell me that they're going to put Gary Oldman as the crow, as the main guy. And I'm still going to tell you that it's that, that is it's disrespectful to the memory of Brandon Lee. Remake City of Angels. Please, God, remake Rick at Wicked Prayer. Like, just get rid of it. Get rid of every other. Get rid of Salvation, Stairway to Heaven, every crow sequel there is. But leave the original alone. A, mm -hmm. a man died making that film. True. B, it was a period piece. It was it was a time and frame that's that encompassed where my, the goth scene in the nineties. And that's why I want to see how they're going to transfer this to. Oh, this the crow current day. is going to be a a, a crying protest protesting SJW. I don't know. Uh, I I don't exactly know what they're going to make him because in, in this day and age, there's nothing that stands out really. I mean, uh, but the story can continue on. I mean, we've seen that through the other they're crow not, movies. They're not continuing Eric Draven's story. Yes, but if they have the stylized 
direction for the crow you could modernize it's one of the most 90s movies from the 90s and you you modernize it you're not telling the same story and what mark my words right now it's on recording mark it we're gonna watch it come out and it's gonna be garbage and when it comes out and it's garbage i'm gonna sit here in front of this microphone and i'm gonna be talking about how much garbage that movie was i'm going to it's gonna be the first movie in history i bootleg well since we've gotten so passionate about bootlegging and bad movies, why don't we move on to your next one? Because I think your crow rant is about done. It is. You, you sure? I'm done. I'm sorry. It, it's all right, man. It's all right. Everybody gets a little emotional every once in a while over their favorite movie. And uh, <laughs> you've it's definitely... It's in my top ten. It's in your top ten with the worst ones, huh? It, all it's, right. No, it's in my top ten of my, my favorite films. Oh, the top... That one is. But yeah. the remake's probably going to no, be... No, they're... I'm, I'm, be number one of your I, all-time haters. I'm going to want to... I'm going to want to punch myself in the genitals. Okay, so I'm going to get into one of my all-time favorite remakes that we can get into a, a real direction of where they were going. And it is basically Seven Samurai versus Magnificent Seven, um, Magnificent Seven 1960s and Magnificent Seven 2016. All three, again, I think breaks that rule that you were talking about beforehand. Exceptions. Exceptions. But the more exceptions I keep on bringing up, the more it's kind of knocking down some of the other movies that are remakes. I think that if done properly with enough thought and well production, direction, writing, editing, you have to put the whole package together to do a well put together remake. And this one has been done on as far as theatrical film three times. That's not counting the anime that came out. So let's let's go ahead and talk about another film that's been remade three times. Okay, what do you have? From 1932. Okay. An awesome film was made. Okay. The Mummy. In 1999. Again. They made fun of it, starring Brandon Fraser. I still thought that was a good Mummy movie. Now I'm not talking about any of the sequels that came out with it. I'm just talking about strictly the first one. I didn't think they were making fun of it. I thought they just made. A I thought it was version. bad. I thought it was bad until I watched 2017 and wished that movie was just them remastering the 1999 version. See, this to give everybody else who happens to be listening a little bit of background. This is one of the movies that really kind of pushed us to going. We have I to raged. We, we have to do a podcast. I called him the day after I saw it, raging, because uh, to preface my favorite. The, 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 film, the film genre that I love the most are the black and white universal movie monsters. I love Dracula, Frankenstein, Mummy, Wolfman, Creature. Oh, you forgot your bride, man. Uh, bride. Thank you. I mean, if you're going to name almost all of them, you might as well go ahead and do I, I it. I didn't forget. I, I'm trying to slow down my train of thought before I rage out again thinking about the oh, movie. No, no more rage. You already had your one rage. For I did. I, I, you I'm, you wasted have, it on that. We're on, a, we're on a subject matter that's going to cause me to rage a few times. Okay. Let's... Um, that's my, it's my favorite thing. Those movies made me love film. Those movies made me love movies. My favorite movie of all time is, is Frankenstein. It's, it's, my fa- it's my favorite literary work. I, I am thrilled... That Universal took an interest in in revamping their genre. Mm-hmm. I think conceptually, the idea of it was fantastic. I think the execution of it was poor. And that is my problem with remakes. It always is a good idea on paper. It sounds good. You're like, oh man, I would love to see a remake of that film I once loved. Because it brings it into a more modern time. And then you see it and you're like, oh man... I hate them right now. See, I think that with the, what they did with The Mummy was, I call the Batman effect. They launched too many characters, which one over is too many characters, in the initial Mummy. That's the straight off the bat. Well, you could have called it anything else other than The Mummy. You could have just called it The Dark Universe. Literally have it be the introduction movie to The Dark Universe. It would have made a little bit more sense. And then just have, have The Mummy in it without 
you know, and because there was nothing yeah. wrong. It was the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde part that pushed it for me, and I'm. You know, that was the most. That was what I was most intrigued to see is how they were going to do that, and they did it horribly, in um, my personal opinion. It's the only time I could ask Russell Crowe, "What the hell is wrong with you?" And that was my only. That's the only movie I could say that Russell Crowe would go. You really dropped. I mean, he hasn't done a lot of good movies, but he's done well in them. Right. This is the first time he was in a, in my opinion, that he was in a bad movie and did poorly. And it was all the way around. There were some cool concepts. Uh, there were some amazing scenes that were in there. But... If, you under- if you, the audience, understood how much I dislike Tom Cruise, for me, <laughs> saying that Tom Cruise is the most enjoyable part of The Mummy is a big step. Because I really dislike him as an actor. I did not appreciate the fact that we got another iconic Tom Cruise running scene. Oh, that's part of that's part I of think, his entire like, I think his docket comes in with he's got to show how much cardio he's got. I get Can it. you run? And if he can get a motorcycle scene in there, he's definitely going to add it in there. That's kind of like, you know, the only thing one, I was disappointed in is I was hoping that somewhere there was a couch he was going to jump up and down on. Because that is my favorite Tom Cruise moment. All right. So, getting back to the mummy. Right. Listen, so, okay, if, it's been if remade changed, multiple times. It's been re- remade multiple times. You, Not a huge fan of the second one, but I still think it is, still has its place. I think the part that destroyed I was happy this, for Brennan Fraser to get work. And I thought the first one he's was... He's my favorite caveman. Oh, boy. That's a different day for another movie. Were we going to do a podcast about Polly Shore films? You know, we could do that, but they'll be my day to have the nerd rage because I really think all those movies were a waste of film. As long as we can include some John, well, some early John Leguizamo work. Okay, I'm down to talk about the past. Or uh... uh-huh. <laughs> you want to talk about John Leguizamo? Uh, oh, I love that guy. He's one of my all-time favorites. John Leguizamo is, is 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 great, man. But some of his choices. Uh, what you're not you're not a big fan of the Violator. I another, thought it was another thing that I was so excited to see, and I, there I hear they're remaking it. To this day, I still think it is one of the best comic book movies. But that's for another podcast. I viewed it as a comic book turned cartoon turned movie, kind of like the Transformers. It is better than the Transformers, though. Okay, everything. The, the, you're not saying the bar really any on <laughs> but that. But when one. when John Leguizamo is the as the violator <laughs> is better than any movie starring Optimus Prime. You know, there's a problem about the movie starring Optimus Prime. Because everybody should be excited about seeing a giant robot truck fighting other giant robots. But you're not. I hear of another Transformers movie coming out, and I just want to go to bed. Okay, then. So, back to The Mummy. We're going to actually finish this out. Okay. What, minus the fact that it wasn't done right, did they lose the feel of The Mummy is the yeah. big question that I have for you. Listen, the one of the big things that horror back in the day did was it, it gave you a reason to imagine. It never showed the death. It never showed... It wasn't filled with jump scares and this convoluted plot twist. It was just monsters versus humans, or humans versus monsters. Or the monster inside of man himself. Yeah, well, that's the humans versus monsters, mm. and the, the using Frankenstein as the, the humans were the evil in that film. Mm. But there is something you get, there's something you can't recreate from old horror. They're, they they pushed boundaries, they should. Like, some of them push boundaries, some of them... Some of them just upheld the status quo with phenomenal actors. I mean, it's the reason I have a problem with people remaking Vincent Price films. The quality of that man's acting okay. over uh, trumps everything any other actor could possibly do, minus Christopher Lee or now, Bella if, Lugosi if we're gonna or go Boris into, Karloff. If we're going to go into this, we might as well jump into Or Lon it. Chaney Jr. or any of the other actors I could possibly continue naming right now. Which I bet you were, could for a while. So... In that same arena, if we're going to jump into the... You brought up Vincent Price. I have to talk about one of my favorite movies. You're going to talk about The Fly, aren't you? Yes. Yes, yes, I am. Okay, now, so it's, 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 a, it's an exception to my golden rule because it has Jeff Goldblum in it. Okay, but the 1958 version starred your boy... Vincent Price. Vincent Price. I know. Now, we have two movies. And now, they still shouldn't have done it. But was it? I feel. I feel like. I feel like that character from from Sling Blade should have done that. He's just a boy. Biscuit some mustard. Yeah. All right. The whole thing comes down to it is: was that really a remake? They took it in it totally. That's a reimagining. Reimagining. Definitely a reimagining. So would you even put it in the remake? It's still talked about here. It's it's not a direct remake. It's not a remastering like the remake of Psycho was. It's still. 
included in the remake category because it is a movie that was based off of a former film. But it is in the reimagining. It's it's like um I guess you can say that with the uh the second mummy and the third mummy. They're reimaginings. They're, oh yeah, definitely. They're, they're, de- they're not the same story and the fog just happened to be done well. Mm. Not the fog, the the fly. We can get into the into that. The one fog also. is the the fog is probably my most hated remake in history. Uh, those ones are way worse. Well, here's why the fo- I hate the fog the most. So when I was a little kid and watched the fly, mm-hmm. it was one of the first horror movies I actually like. You're sat talking about down the fifty eight one. I'm talking the the fog, not the fog. Oh, you're talking about the fog. I've moved on. Okay. Oh, you've moved on. Yeah. I want to get back to the fly. We'll get back to the fly, but I just mentioned why, like, I I, I screwed up and said the fog because I was thinking about the fog, and I mentioned that the fog is my most hated film that's been remade. Uh, Then the fog scared me as a small child. It actually terrified me, mostly because there's always fog out. You know, it's it's just something, I don't know why. I watched The Gate first. Didn't scare me as bad. That's a classic. I don't know why the fog scared me so much, but. In 2005, when the movie came out, I saw it because I was excited to see the remake because it was the only movie that I remember being truly afraid of. And then I watched it, and I thought of myself as the dumbest person alive because I can't be afraid of a movie like this. And then I watched the original, and I hate the original too. Okay. And not because the original is a bad film, but because I hate the 2005 version so much, it made me hate the original. <laughs> because it made me feel stupid for being afraid of the original when I was a kid. And I was a little kid. So, you know, little kids are afraid of random crap. It was so bad that I hate a movie that actually caused me to want to watch other horror films to see if I could chase that fear. See, mine is the exact opposite. And then we're going to do this whole F game backwards. Mine was going from... 58 Fly, which I thought was almost on the psychological horror side of things, to going into 1986. You're dealing with Jeff Goldblum, and we're not just dealing with, you have, you know, my little head on a fly body, and I'm flying around, and oh no, the spider, help me. There is something different about the fact my man's vomiting on his own food, so he's able to eat it. The fact that parts of his skin are starting to flake off, and Jeff Goldblum being Jeff Goldblum of... The I 80s, think I think he did it the fly so much eighty six was more of a a in the sci fi horror genre. Oh, definitely, than it was definitely sci fi, like psychological horror. Yeah, there's, we definitely have to see. That's what gets into that weird category of sci fi horror. I, I just have to bring it up for a minute because that's its own weird category that sometimes really isn't traditional horror because it's so sci fi. Go to certain, if you, when movie stop was still around, if you went to there, sci fi and horror were put in the same category. Category because there's some things that are just. It's, it, they're geek films. Most people that love horror are, are horror geeks. Yeah. And, of course, we know sci-fi fans are generally sci-fi, sci-fi fans. But then you also have those great movie crossovers. Uh, Event Horizon is the one that comes to mind where it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Because I, I don't consider Event Horizon a horror movie, nor do I consider it sci-fi, though. I mean, do you know, what, you know what crossover I hated? Hmm. Jason X. And Leprechaun in Space. I didn't like that either. There's a I like of... Leprechaun in Space more than I like Jason X. But I think that it gets into that whole line of crossovers and then throwing anything in space other than Lost in Space, which recently just put out its new trailer on Netflix. They're doing another Lost in Space? <laughs> it's not they're going to. They're, it's, so that, they've done another Lost in Space. And well, they sucked the first two times, so... Let's hope the oh, next one's you, better. Hopefully you're not talking about the original, because I loved it. I said the first two times. The fr- oh, come on. The first one was... It's up there with Battlestar Galactica for me. Which I also thought was good. You're a sci-fi fan. Yeah, huge. Do you know what I'm not? Um, Hold on, let me think about it. Not Big Monster. Oh, yeah, sci-fi. That's yeah. what it was. Those are the two things that <laughs> I we don't agree on. Yeah. I, 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 can, I can appreciate some sci-fi. I am not a huge science fiction fan. I am a own. huge fantasy fan. Give me sword and shield and elves and dwarves any day, and I'm excited to see it. Of course, uh, unless it stars Charlie Hunnam with the magical sword. Yep. But we, that, that was, that was last people, time. that's two two times three times now in a row. You we have to make it. We have to make a a no talking of of <laughs> of, of King, King Arthur? Arthur in this room. Okay. Um. Now he's it's forever dead. So, 
but I'm just not a sci-fi fan. It's it's nothing nothing no, against no. it. I'm sure it's a great. I'm sure it's great. Mm. I'm sure that it is for the people that like it. it it's going to be awesome. I, I hope. Uh, I want to wait and see this. There are sometimes when a movie comes out or uh, whatever, yeah, however you want to put it, a release comes out. You go, this could be good or this could be really, really bad. And talking about movies that start off really good and end up really, really bad. Let's go ahead and talk about House of Wax. Mm-hmm. Let, let's just get this out of the way right now. I already talked about it. Well, I'll, I'll talk about it again. House of Wax, the original 1953 amazing film. That's all I want to hear you say. Because then I don't want to House you, of you, Wax. Like, don't, don't. Starring Perth Hilton. Uh, only movie I've ever walked out on, on theaters. We've already talked about it. It sucked. It was cool to watch Paris Hilton die. Yeah, it was... That was uh, not that I wish any harm on that woman. I just I feel like now she's been impaled in two mediums. Okay, but 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 we're moving on to something else. Wow! All right, the Blob, one of my all-time favorites, and there rumor has it, and Samuel L. Jackson will be in, in, involved. I hope he voices it. <laughs> you just hope that he's involved in some way. I just or... hope he voices the Blob. I'm hoping that <laughs> the Blob it's Samuel L. No Jackson. Voice. I, but I'm saying I'm hoping that's what he brings to the table. That he is just the voice of the blob, and as he is as he is swallowing people, he just keeps saying, you know, like <laughs> his normal phrases. Yeah, and I hope they burn in hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm hoping that's what happens because other than that, I can't see it being any good. This is one of those moments where I go every time it's been done, jumping from the very first one, 1958. Technology is what made it work better because one of my I love the 1988 version, not for the acting. The acting is, well, it's 1980s movie. It's on par with that. But what made that movie interesting for me is the main creature. You have the blob. You've improved it. You have the bodies that are still stuck inside of it, slowly being dissolved when the girl gets surrounded inside of the phone booth. You're seeing faces. Unlike in the original, it was just, you know, black goo just taking over people. This one gives you an idea of there's something inside of this thing that's that's going on and the the fact that some people are still sort of alive. Now, we take that from 1988, which a lot of practical, a lot of old school flubber goo stuff that people put in fake oh, models man. and stuff. Don't in. say flubber. That makes me miss Robin Williams. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't you know, know what? You've been too positive about this. As soon as you're done, I've got a movie for you. Are you? Oh wow! You're, you're gonna try to bring me to your dark side. Or I something? am. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I want to hear him rage out. Okay, but the whole point is, we could do some great things with the technology jump for the new blob. But here's the problem: we are way out of the line of doing practical effects nowadays. Everything is so CG. So while I talk really right, good, you want to see green screen blob and people running on with green screen backgrounds with some with some ball with all the lights on it. Like I, I just want to see the behind the scenes and people trying to keep a straight face. <laughs> and that's where I'm going to run into how far can we honestly take a new version of the blob? Unless they go into a grouping of people that go, we are old school horror fans. We're going to do this practical. I know who should they should get. They should get no one. Okay, he be... only does practical effects. Like if, if you tell me inter- Christopher Nolan's directing it, I'll forgive him for mm. Interstellar. I'll forgive him for it. I mean, I probably won't, but I'll pretend to. You can at least pretend to, because if that got involved, I think that would be, I would be very. This is one thing I can appreciate about Interstellar. It was done with practical, right? So let's see exactly where we can go, or with the next one, because right. uh, you say you have some. All right, let's talk about Halloween. Oh man. Oh. Let's. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna shut up here. I'm gonna let Alex tell me why. Tell me about Halloween, Alex. Tell me about it. I can, and I can actually be positive about the How? new version of How. I mean, other than the points I give you, take That's... away the points that I've given you. The, the other than the points of the getting a chance to see the background of. No, no, I'm not talking about that because we're gonna we're gonna go. I want to hear it. I want to oh. hear what your problems with Rob Zombie's version is. He should never have touched it. Period. Straight out the why straight out the gate. Why not? Disservice. I mean, the the original one, two, skip three, four, and that's where we're all starting. Oh, Halloween three. Oh, Halloween uh, three. <laughs> I can hear that song which, playing uh, in my head right uh, now, though the mask. It's the pumpkin. But he should never have touched it. He added his own grittiness that he used in Devil's Rejects and House of a Thousand Corpses. Corpse. Corpses. 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 Corpse eye. Corpse eye. I don't know. Either way. He used that same grittiness for a movie that should have been about a guy that was almost magical. That's what you get 
with him. He's you magical. know that was the one thing I loved about um, Michael Myers though is that he wasn't magical. He, he wasn't. He, he wasn't, wasn't dead. He wasn't some demon. He wasn't a, but a he, jinn. Though I love love Wishmaster. Um, he wasn't any of those things. He was just a crazy dude. He was a crazy dude. But if you look at some of the scenes out of the original, coming down off of the of a rafter with one arm and hitting the floor with no one hearing you, and that's a big guy. I'm sorry. That right on his feet. Big guys can be light on their feet. Yeah, they can Look, be. Look, you but... obviously don't watch pro wrestling. There are some big <laughs> dudes doing some flippy stuff. I'm not saying that you can't be big and flip and everything, but it was the way it was done and how slow it was done. Plus, also in the original, you came up to the after kill. You're running down the hallway. Oh, no, where's Timmy? Where's Timmy? And you all of a sudden, he's nailed to the wall. That's my favorite part blade. about it is you didn't ever see the person die. You just saw the, the aftermath. aftermath. It leaves a suspension of disbelief, some kind of... And and that to me is scarier than actually having the jump scare, like the oh I get to see the knife go through the face. face. That to me that's where I start going into it. I know there's probably a huge grouping of horror fans like no the Rob Zombie one was really good. Hey, I'm glad you feel that way. My biggest problem was he's glad it, you feel that way. I'm gonna tell you straight up you're wrong. Eh. I was hoping for more rage, but I'll I'm not gonna it. rage. Let I'm me. Not, I'm, I'm not gonna rage. rage. I'm not gonna rage for one reason. Everybody has their own. Or, the own thought, their own opinion, to sit there and like the films they're going to like. At least we're having a chance to talk about it. Am I a fan of the Rob Zombie Halloween 1 and 2? No. I, 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 I'll, I'll I, say my piece about Rob Zombie then. Say your piece about Rob Zombie. The I only think... movie he has made that I have enjoyed thus far has been Devil's Rejects. House of a Thousand Corpses was a bag of garbage. It I was, it was a, a great comedy. Gar- I, it was, was a one hot of the greatest bag comedies. of garbage. You cannot tell me this movie that was pushed back and pushed back and pushed back was was too gory and too this and too that. And that's why I kept getting pushed back. And then what we got was a steaming pile of hot garbage. And then we got Devil's Reject. Awesome throwback to the 70s Grindhouse action film. I loved it. A little, little bit of crazy, you know, serial killer horror yeah, sprinkles thrown in there. But for the most part, it was a really good Grindhouse style action film. Yeah, but then... But see, you're counting House of a Thousand Corpses, Corpse Eye, as traditional horror. No, it, I'm, it, I'm it, counting it as his directorial debut. Uh, First impressions are everything, and he did not impress me. So, we move on to, how, we move on to Devil's Rejects. I, I give him a thumbs up. He still has one down. Then we got Halloween. And he missed everything that John Carpenter had, had brought to us and made that movie good. The only thing he gave us was a background. The only thing he gave us was a little more insight to that child's which, mind. Which, what he missed was what everything that made Michael Myers scary. At least in the Friday the 13th remake, they took all the things that made Jason beatable and threw him out the window. The movie sucked, but Jason was at least a little more intimidating. I well, wait a minute. The kills the kills in the remake of Friday the 13th were I I laughed from start to finish. I thought it was one of the greatest comebacks of all time. I mean, okay. The kills. Um everything else okay. in that in that move in the the new the newer Friday the 13th, I thought was garbage. I thought if you're going to remake Friday the 13th, remake it like the first one, and I'm not going to give a spoiler for anybody who has never seen the original Friday the 13th. Boo you. How have you not? That, that, that's if, you, if, you, if you haven't seen it, then you obviously haven't seen Scream because they, they spoiled it in that movie too. They spoiled it in that one? One of the questions in the very first, be, in the beginning of Scream I don't remember was that. who was the killer in Friday, Friday the, the 13th, 13th and what she got wrong. The question she got wrong that caused her boyfriend Steve to die. Was who was the killer in the original Friday the 13th. 13th. And there's the mess up thing is there are people out there who <coughs> don't know that. It's because they haven't seen it. Yeah, there's... And that they've been living under a bridge. But it, to back on, my, back on my why Rob Zombie disappointed me. Um, and he missed everything that made it great. He missed everything, in my opinion, that, just, that made that movie magical. Uh, uh, Rob, uh, Rob Zombie's Michael rendition of Michael Myers just reminded me of the guitarist from Slipknot, the giant one with the steel mask. That's all okay. it reminded me of. Just giant, big, silent guy. Looks like he'd rape you in an alley. But he wasn't methodical serial killer presence. No. You go into Halloween 2, I'm not even going to talk about that. I'm not it's, even... It's, 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 it's worse than, Hall- than the other Halloween. And then you go into the, the last movie I ever saw of Rob Zombie. Oh, yeah. You, you, and you didn't get to, was it, 43? No, I have 20, not. Nope, no, nope. I won't do it. I won't do it after Lords of Salem. I gave him his last chance. He can't direct. He should just go back to making crappy 80s metal music and, and, and retire there. He can't do it. He needs to just do something else. Go crochet. 
Go crochet little metal metal crochets. Make make some little make some little goth beanies for babies. I don't know. Do anything else than direct a film. Do You're look, garbage, Mr. Zombie. You're garbage. Now see, I want to give him. It was half worse than Hellbilly Deluxe. Your I solo see, debut. I want to see if he could do something outside of that genre. Please don't. I, it, when, when I, I said I, that. I said that about. I said that about Kevin Smith. See Kevin Smith, and then I saw Red wait, State. But wait a minute, though. Kevin Smith also already had his lane. Yeah, he and Rob Zombie exactly had his where... too. It's called White Zombie, and he left it back in the early nineties. Let's see. That's where I, I differ. With, I have to sit there and differ with you because I think that you take him out of that element of I'm going to try to make modern grindhouse. He might be at an actual. You know who is good at modern grindhouse? Eli Roth. Okay. Good at modern grindhouse. You know who's really good at minor, modern grindhouse? Oh boy. Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez. In fact, they did a double feature Feature. called Grindhouse. True. You know who we should just let do Grindhouse? The people who are good at it. There's also the the mystery of how to do Grindhouse. Or any of the up and coming independent films you can find on Netflix or or, at various streaming sites or even on YouTube. I see some solid potential on some on some directors who do a Grindhouse style. But Rob Zombie can't do it. If eighteen year old kids who have never had any kind of has no have no connections to Hollywood can write and direct a movie on YouTube that is better than your high budget piece of crap. You have no business directing a film. No business at all. So you're saying no Rob Zombie doing No Rob anything. Zombie doing film ever again. He sh- he's in timeout. He's in time he's in director timeout. He's in directorial timeout. <laughs> directorial he can timeout. sit there with Michael Bay. And think about what they did to Jerry Brockheimer. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's take it from that to Footloose. Do you want to go there? I mean, I, <laughs> 80s dance montages. That's the only good thing about either film. Uh, Kevin Bacon was mildly entertaining in the original. I saw briefly, like, I, 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 I don't even know if I even saw the remake. I think I did. <laughs> so it was, well it was you terrible. Actually um, I, I think I, I think it was terrible. I don't know. The original one I didn't like a lot, so I I don't have. It's not something I don't have a dog in that fight. It's probably it's probably garbage. Okay, I'm just trying to sit there and narrow it down. Maybe getting you out of the whole Rob Zombie arena. Oh no, we've like done it. Loose. Like I, I just <laughs> that's, that's a total blank for me. Um, that's do you know it was garbage. Hmm. Total Recall. <sighs> 2012's Total Recall was see, now, garbage. Now, see, I have a, a dog in that fight. The 90s, the, the 1990 version with Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'm sorry, that, that arm scene in the other, that was great. I think that's where we get into the technology, got that one over. See, on, to, on me, that one for, that, for me. to me, that movie, that were, movie belonged in the cheap, the cheap, the cheap like, B-movie bin. And I think that it had an opportunity to, to do something more than what the original content gave us. And improved upon it. I like the the sci-fi. The, the CG actually worked for this one compared to, you know, the woman with three boobs. That is, there's a line where I go, we should improve upon certain things. But I don't think everything should be a remake. But if we're going to go down that same road, all that stuff that I talk good, I can also counter my own self. So I already know I can't get too far in this because RoboCop was garbage to me. I thought that, See, that, that should never... See, here is my disagreement. I thought that it should I think been... the military-grade weapon RoboCop remake of... I don't remember what year it came out recently. Um, versus the terrible, cheeky 80s film. I think they were both great in their own right. Because no, because one you... was like this military-grade weapon where you you had to see, you know... You got to see what the... You got to see Ed 209s be something other than floppy, you know... Models, yes, but see, it fit for the time period because the technology was rising. We were getting that level of improvement. That ro- that this current version of Robocop just looks so out of place. No, and it does. Okay, in, in the, in I'm gonna stop trying period. to be positive. Look, okay, when you, you no go. longer have cut segments where somebody's <laughs> yelling, I'd buy that for a dollar, and you don't have the gu- the melting guy going, me. <laughs> and you don't have you know, that same guy spraying gasoline into you know, like it's. That's where I was there's getting There's Murphy. Into- it's you. Yeah. There, there's iconic scenes. And even even RoboCop 3, man. That and weird that's... Asian robot with the with the garrote. And it, it was great. And that's why I said those movies... There are certain movies, and we've brought this up before. There are certain movies that fit in that time period. It's kind of like yeah, whether you feel about The Crow. I don't think you can... They really have to do a lot of work to kind of 
update that RoboCop suit to still make it not look like it was something out of, well... Well, go ahead and call it. He 80s. looked like a giant penis. Okay, I wasn't going to even think about it like that, but now that the you The RoboCop it, remake suit, it just looks like a giant penis. It was almost the exact same suit from the, the 80s one. So, I mean, were you trying to say about the 80s one also? Is it's, it it's look a giant like... phallic symbol. Okay, as long as you're okay with saying... No, and it's fine, but one's, one's, one's cheeky good humor, the other one takes itself way too seriously. I think that's where the other big problem was with the newer one was... They took that as like, this is them. I'm like, I, I laughed through a lot of these. You know who's great in it, though? Remakes. Who? Oh. Samuel L. Jackson. You know, I totally forgot he was in that. Nah, see, that was, that was, that's the redeeming quality. And that proves that Samuel L. Jackson can improve anything. Make it, a, make it a, a promising film. Even Snakes on a Plane. Okay, I can't think of one. I was honestly trying to think of a movie that he was in that I go... No, that character. Look, you remove you remove him from the original Jurassic Park. It's not as good. Nope. Hold on to your butts. Yeah. Yeah. That was you another. Know, yeah. That, he, it's you take him at a deep blue sea. Well, then you. <laughs> then, All then you the have shark. is LL Cool J's <laughs> yeah. death. And then you just have a shark just killing people. Then it's just like we've yeah, seen that Jaws. Yeah. You take him out of. Oh, oh. Do you could put that in the same category? Because I mean, in all honesty, you still have Killer Shark. You want to go with that whole? No, no we're going to no, go into Killer Sharks into the genre. Because then, if we're going to, we can have a whole podcast on Killer Sharks, and I can praise, <laughs> I can praise the Sharknado. Yes, you and your Sharknado fandom. What was Look, it? There's a new one coming there, out. Yeah, man, it always comes out around my birthday. It's like a, it's like a wonderful birthday. Right, so, gift. what is the Sharks? It was it Sharks Shark in Time? Six. What, sharks in Time. I think this one's in space. I don't know, man. Sharks in space. I don't know exactly how you did it, but. I'm so excited, and I'm look. I'm not excited about this because it's a good film. <laughs> I am not. I'm excited to see what more can they come up with, man. This is. I never thought I'd like Tara Reid, but I'm just so happy to see her every time I do because I know that with Why her are they doing comes so a many Sharknado. I, I, because there's a point that you have to. Stop. I, I said this the same thing. So at silly. least, well, see, that's the thing. At least with these, I can say that there's a comedic value, and no one is taking themselves seriously. Right. But. They're they still made... putting their acting chops down on making this look serious, and that's the part that's getting me. I'm like, really? You're you're bringing but no, in... everybody. It's, this is this is direct to sci-fi. Nobody takes it seriously. No, but it's fun. I it mean, is. it's it's good fun. But it's look at look fun. at how many look at how many saws have come out. Okay, that that's not film fun. Exactly. <laughs> so you just totally. I was all happy, little yeah, Sharknado, see, you know, and then you just brought Sharknado, me back Sharknado's down. Sharknado's to... wonderful because it's just a good time. It's, it's a saw... terrible film, but it's such a good time. Good time. Saw saw man, Eli Roth did that better too. Yeah, see, see that's the, that's my. We're getting off the remake category. You know, I hope somebody remakes Saw, and in the film, the both people get up and beat the guy in the middle to death. It's a five and just minute walk movie. Out. Yeah. Five minute movie. Saw done right. Hey, that guy looks like he just twitched. Is he breathing? Let's find out. I bet he did this. <laughs> he gets up. No. End. Yeah. <laughs> El fin. But. I mean, there's not many more other remakes. We there can is, with there is actually that we were willing to talk about. There is prom night. All right, the same way. Black Christmas. Hold on, hold on. Hold My on, bloody hold Valentine on. 3D. Okay, that was a really bad one. All right, it here, was. here we go. The same way you feel about Vincent Price, uh, this is the way Vincent, I feel about Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis, the Queen of Scream. You shouldn't even touch prom night. The only reason why I'm really amped up about the new Halloween is because she's involved. She was involved in Resurrection and she died. That was she, the perfect. That should have been the. the and why is she that, back? That was perfect. Why is she back? Who knows? The same reason why Roseanne brought back uh, Dan for her. Right, but see, this is that's my problem. Hey, continuity. They're saying that they're going to make the continuity match. This is supposed to be taking. Yeah, place and Robert through. England said Rorschach would make a good Freddy Krueger. Yeah, I know that. I've heard that garbage too many times. It might be good. Halloween might be good. It might. I'm not. I'm not saying that it's going to be bad. If it's if, uh, who knows? Who knows? What this is? Uh, watch. It's Jamie Lee Curtis is not even going to be Laurie Strode. She's going to be some mom to some kid, and she's it's going to be the Stan Lee cameo in a Halloween remake. It could be. We we never know. Um, I'm waiting to see exactly how they're doing it. They're really hyping up the fact that she's getting herself all prepared for it. But again, this could be another one where she dies all over again. But that did trail on for a little bit too long. My bloody Valentine. That was mm. terrible. Both of them were actually. So I don't I don't have anything really positive to say. Um, wasn't Black Christmas redone? Black Christmas was redone. Yes, uh, the original. Okay, 
the the remake mm, not so good no. see some of these remakes came out when they were just oversaturating the slasher genre anyway so then they're just oversaturating the the horror remake and it, it doesn't make a difference to me okay so then let's get into a, a different version of this before we kind of wrap all this up are there any movies that you honestly can say that you'd be interested in seeing them remake? No jokes, no like five minute version of Saw. Is there a movie from in the day, it can be any time, that you would actually want to see redone, not just for, hey, I want to see this redone with my favorite actors. I'm talking about we have the technology to do it better. And I'm not going into a million dollar man type moment here. We actually do have the technology. We could make things look the way they should. Because there's not some... in the film industry. Okay. I'd like to see it done on TV. Like what? Give me an example. Going back to the what we the film the the TV show we discussed in the last episode. Go ahead. Kindred the Embraced. Yeah. See. I'd like to see that done on on a Netflix medium, where you don't have the same boundaries and you have the same. You know, I can see that being done, but right now talking about that same category, they're supposed to be working on something new based off the originals, doing an original spinoff. But the originals is a spinoff. Well, I know it's a spinoff of a spinoff, but now they're going to do a, a spinoff of a spinoff of a spinoff. <laughs> okay, you see that CW man? They're they're gonna milk a cow till it's dead. Yeah, until it puffs out milk, <laughs> powdered milk. <laughs> Speaking of powdered milk, remember powdered toast man from Ren's? Dimby? Okay, I was like wondering where are you gonna segue this into? Yes, I do remember that, and uh, and it was a I also, national I shaving also yak have day. One <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Uh, uh, no, sir. I don't like, I don't like it. it. All right. Enough but about no, I found. Thing. I did find a remake that I enjoyed. All right. Which one? It's called Good Feathers. <laughs> it's on the Animaniacs. It's a it's a remake of Goodfellas, starring three pigeons. <laughs> That's not. A, all right. All right. Give me. It even starts off with as far as you know he could remember. Always want to be a good yeah. fellow, a good feather. Yeah. All right. You're right. All right. Any other remakes? Any honest remakes? Um, honestly, no. Uh, Kindred the Embraced. Um, actually. You got one? Mm, You're running dry. Nope. Nope. Yeah. I got nothing. Um, in fact, I think mo less remakes should happen. There's some that I would like to see just for the ability of we have the technology to do it better. But I have to counter that with one small thing. Now, we normally we're trying to keep things movie to movie, like big screen movie to big screen movie. But The Mist versus The Mist TV that came out. There you go. You could remake Langoliers into the, as a feature film. Why? Because when they did The Mist, the TV show, I thought it was garbage. Right, it but really, you, see, but the Langoliers was garbage. So maybe, <laughs> maybe if, if you just take a, a garbage film, a garbage, a garbage TV miniseries and make it into a. Nope, nope, they did that with it. Ooh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. You'll flow too. I'm terrible. I don't understand. And if anybody, if anybody listening right now actually enjoyed that piece of crap, you I can find me on Twitter <laughs> at Brad Real Pundit and tweet me. Tell me why you enjoyed it. Because I'll tell you you're an idiot. I know a lot of the people are going to say that it was a little bit closer to the book than the... You know what? I'm glad it wasn't that close to a book. Because if I would have seen a bunch of teenagers having an orgy okay. on screen... I'd have had a problem with that. And let me ask you something. What's wrong with Stephen King that he's writing about underage people having an orgy? Has nobody <laughs> questioned this man yet? No, because he keeps on putting out things that people read. We're moving on away from this because you're, <laughs> you're, just, you're just knocking it out the park today, man. <laughs> I had a good day. That, that's good. And when that's I've good. had a good day, I tend to be a little angrier at nighttime. When right. I have a when I have a bad day, I'm a little more humble. Like, okay, well, let's let's talk about the Oscars. This, <laughs> it was a good show. <laughs> All right, man. But I'm going to talk about one more remake. All one right. more remake before we go. All um, right. And there are two really. I'm going to lump it together because they they were during a ten year period of time that I think Hollywood just really phoned in a lot of their stuff. Um, House on Haunted Hill and Hills Have Eyes. And the, uh, was it also The Haunting? The Haunting, yeah. Yeah, it was um, like almost the same movie, and it, the two of them came out. The well, that remake was House of, on a Haunted Hill and The yeah, Haunting, where, where, where it came out almost within a year yeah. of each other. And so, you have that you have that in Hollywood sometimes too, like um, what is it? Uh, Olympus has fallen and White House down. Yeah, where it's like the same, same movie, same exact movie starring two different people. Like the screen the screenwriter pitched it to two studios, sold it to two studios. <laughs> they tweaked it just enough, and then one made a good one, one made a bad, a bad one. one. Yeah, 
So occasionally what... that happens. But right. these remakes are, uh just I, I don't even know why. Like, okay, so the House on Haunted Hill was fantastic. It was yeah. it, the ni- nineteen fifty nine version was fantastic. Let me let me preface this: the nineteen fifty nine version of House on Haunted Hill was absolutely fantastic. The nineteen ninety nine movie, the highlight in it was. Catherine Zeta Jones? Nope, that was in The Haunting. Oh, was it? Yeah. See, I don't even know because it was all garbage. All right. I'm going to let you go ahead and have your rant about this and I'm going to give you the. I, I've got the... no rant. I okay. just want to talk about how much garbage. And then The Hills Have Eyes. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. See, this is where I have to stop you. House in the Haunted Hill, The Haunting, they did something for the community that I think is important. When you have a lot of these remakes, it also pushes people because there's going to be one person like us who's like, have you seen the original? And it forces people to go out, find these these old films, and watch them. And then they have a chance to compare. So you have a chance See, to bring people back into the fold and teach them. You give them the interest, and then you bring them back. And if they hated the one that was in the theater, and you go, that was a remake, they become interested of like, okay, what was the original? And you get a chance to introduce somebody to a new set of films and have them have the same feelings that we have about some of these remakes. I think that's really important with with, re, with remakes. Remakes are a generational bridge from one generation to another. So you get a chance to go, hey, this is a remake. I like this version. And then somebody behind you or around you is going to go, that's not the original. I wish I was as positive and naive as you. I'm not naive. There's no... no it's not, I know it's not naivety. It's, it's just, to me, to me, it's, it's, just, just, the whole... it's laziness. You're banking on a nostalgia trip to be able to basically print money at the theater is what hollywood's doing that's all it is it's like oh wait a minute hold on are the the business-minded person's gonna sit there and complain about the fact that hollywood's out there trying to make money yeah okay the, let's talk they're... okay we'll, we'll talk we'll put this in a business context okay let's bring... talk about why adidas is number was was number one in the world uh-huh. before nike came out and now they're at the bottom of the rung as far as top shoe shoe companies because they just keep reprinting the same crap at least every other shoe company's innovative and so they stay on top of their game. Adidas, shell top three stripes. There you go. Black, white. There you go. That's what you get. And granted, it sells to people <laughs> with nostalgia problems. Oh. <laughs> so I have a nostalgia problem you now. Adidas? Uh, occasionally, yes. Then yes, you have nostalgia <laughs> problems. Look, I'm not saying anything. I'm still I'm still rocking around, walking around an airwalk. There you go. I have a nostalgia <laughs> problem. But I'm, but I'm saying what is kept, what separates those two shoe companies, Nike is on top of their game, innovating products. Okay. So is Netflix. Okay. I'm going to tie this into last episode. Okay. Nice. Good. good. Go ahead. Make it, do your tie-in. I still think that <clears throat> what we need as a community, no matter what arena we're putting it in as far as in the theater, on Netflix, whatever streaming platform is, we have to get people to watch the original films. Right. Because so you can, we have do that, people... you can do that by if Netflix gets a hold of all of the original films, right? And you like a movie that is similar to the 1959 House on Haunted Hill. Right, so you watch Paranormal Activity for the fourth time because you have no taste. And so then they suggest, well, because you liked Paranormal Activity, you may also like House on Haunted Hill 1959. Yes, but there's a huge difference between the the little algorithm they use in Netflix than having one of your friends telling you, hey, if you haven't seen this... Here, I'll give you my copy, my Blu-ray remastered. So here's some homework 50th. for all the film, the film heads that are listening to this. Go find somebody you don't know and tell them to watch something. Tell them to watch something old and awesome. There you go. And that's how it starts. That's how film conversation comes up. Because if you've actually seen both versions and you're a huge fan of one of the more current versions, you probably have no taste. Not always. It's a different perspective. With having that, whatever you've gone through in your life, because the time periods when these movies came out, well, these some of these classics came out, there was nothing else to balance it off of. So, without the special effects... Without, I can't really base film on, on what I've gone through in my life, because I've never once been to a hotel room where somebody was you know, speaking to their dead mother, and I still appreciate Psycho. Well, I've been to a couple of hotels that happen to have taxidermy animals on the wall. I mean, wh- where, where's the problem? Maybe you're looking for those hotels because you're a fan of Psycho. True. Okay, I guess that kind of knocks that whole concept out. But no, I'm saying that I, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to wax museums. But okay, I still will, but I'm also waiting for that final scene. of. Uh, so I guess I have a horror problem. But, no, I'm not going uh, to wax museums, not because I didn't appreciate 1953, but because 
uh, the 1953 version, but because I have no interest in going to freaking wax museums. Okay. But I'll still watch House of Wax. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's my point. I get your point. I know exactly where you're going. And I see what you're saying. Some of this stuff is extremely lazy on, hey, let's just print out another remake of something that worked I'll, before. I'll use the example of of the, the most recent experiment by Universal. We'll backtrack back to The Mummy, but not speak about that film. We'll talk about what was what was going to be. We'll talk about The Invisible Man. Who did they use? They were going to use Johnny uh, Depp, Johnny Depp yeah, for that. Yeah, Johnny Depp is the Invisible Man. I'm sure that millions and millions of tweens and millions and millions of young adults and millions and millions of Johnny Depp's fans would have flocked to the theaters to watch this movie. To watch the movie, but they would never really but, have a, a background of the actual exactly. character. It's laziness. It's, it's printing money. It's printing money. We've missed one. What? And I'm going to have to sit there and interrupt this just for a second because we've missed a huge one, even though we're going over time. Dracula. Which one? That's the point. Because the because you were talking about the the Universal monster movies, and it made me think about what started their whole. Technically, it's I, all different stories, same character. Right. And none of them, other than the movie with Gary Oldman, I mean, is actually based on the book itself. Right. But so, you were talking about Universal monster movies, and I was thinking about that. You're using the, the, a, that's the, a, the you're using a character concept more than a story. I'm actually going a totally different way with it. Do you think if we cap it with the whole Dracula Untold, the way they did that one? You think they could have done a dark universe based off of that? This yes. is a question straight Hands off the down, top yes. of my head. Because with the way they were going with it so far, especially with the order that they were going to do it, which is where I had a huge problem with the Universal Monster movie, because they were going to do if Bride before they did Frankenstein, if you which is really done, weird to me. If, you would have take, if Universal would have taken it from Dracula the Untold, basically telling an origin story of, of a story of a character we all know. Right. And most people wouldn't even have a clue about Vlad Tepes or, you know... In changing it, because they did, they, yeah. they, they took some creative liberty with that. They did, and then and then having the same actor play Dracula in the new film because you set it up for it at the end, right? And then you have an you have an antagonist, the guy that created, or you have an antagonist and a protagonist in a film. It basically already wrote itself. You just have to come up with a creative way to make that work and base your dark universe on that. And in that film, then you can introduce Jekyll and Hyde, who then goes with Dracula to hunt down big bad, big bad vampire man. And then you go into you can have it transition into. A Doctor Frankenstein film. Yeah, where, you have and a then chance you can have to that transition into, and you literally can have the same guy, the same guy. You can then you have Jacqueline Hyde just in every film since you want to use that as your tie-in. Four movies in, have a Jacqueline Hyde film. By that time, I'm sick of them. I no no longer even want to watch the originals. And then you could bring in other characters. Correct. Either way, it's we can keep going on remakes after yeah. remakes after remakes for the rest of the night. I think people. Have I think the people listening to this will at least get the point that I'm not a fan of them for the most part. There's a few that I am. Um, and I think they're all, it's really, it's subjective. Uh, if you like a current one versus an, an old one or like vice said, versa. Tweet me. Tweet <laughs> me and tell me why. Tell yeah. me why you like it. I yeah, might call sure. you an idiot on the internet, but hey. He will me. definitely battle you Well, If you have an old one that you really like or a new one that you really like, I'll at least take a look at it and try to find that there's good film work and all these films, no matter if you like the director or not, or if it's Michael Bay, I will probably say something bad about it. But sans that, I think that as long as it gets people to watch movies, you sit down together, and if you're an old school fan and you're sharing with your friend the new school movie, you're both sitting down watching movies, you're having debates like this, you're, you're keeping film alive in conversation. I think that's the important part. Whether you like the remakes or not, I think at least it promotes conversation, which is what this is all about. And my homework for all of you this week is to find somebody who's got no taste and only likes these movies that are being pumped out and show them something classic. Show them something worthwhile. Show them something that took a lot of ingenuity and creativity to make. Okay, and then my homework is watch The Thing, because eventually I'm going to talk about that. Yeah, we were supposed to talk about it tonight. That might have yeah. been the thing to get him to rage out. No, because I, I think there were some really cool ideas as far as the... That wasn't a remake, though. No, it was a, it was, it was a that, prequel. It fits in the same category as It does. No, it does it not. It was a prequel. It This current version of It was not a prequel. They didn't do the kid version in the miniseries and TV. They did the adult, adult version, version, with a lot which of... Which makes that a prequel. prequel. Well, they're also going to be doing the adult version. Right, that's the remake. <laughs> that's the remake. 
but right. it's it's still it's it's a it's a revisiting. It's a revisiting. They revisited they revisited, they they, revisited something nobody asked for. True, but they also that was a part of the story that was the way the original thing started off was the other camp was having a problem. Yeah. So anyway, other you know than that, that, you know what that movie missed? Hmm. The thing, hmm. the remake. Which one? Practical effects. The remake missed. Uh, the most see, recent missed the practical effects. And the mess up thing is that gets into studio interference because the original they still have. If you get the actual Blu-ray, they have the practical effects on there. They were really going to go heavy with practical effects, and then they were like, "We'll add a little CG here." Well, that turned into a little bit more CG there, a little bit more, and then they said, "You know what? We're just going to take this whole part out and CG it in." They still have it. If you, I think it's on the Blu-ray where you actually can see the behind the scenes of they have the practical effects of. Almost all the monsters that they had there. I have an idea for a remake. Huh. Let's take the premise of Halloween. Okay. And fuse it with Footloose. Dancing Michael Myers? No. Basically, so a kid moves to a small town in Texas that has... Well, we'll take Halloween. Uh-huh. Right? We'll take... Uh, we'll just take Footloose and a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay, so... A kid moves, a kid moves from up north to a small town in Texas. Uh-huh. Where it is forbidden to dance and do anything because it angers the local cannibal family. And on that note, we're going to say goodnight <laughs> from the real pundits. <laughs> yes, sir. We'll talk. We'll see you next time on episode four, where we will be discussing something not <sighs> remakes. I'm pretty sure we're going to be talking about um, comic books. Yeah, you, you, that's our comic book episode. You, and by comic books, I mean comic book movies. And I'm going to talk about how much I hate those two. Is anybody surprised? I doubt it. I doubt it. Have a nice one.